Hello, I'm Jenny and I am a vet. I've been a vet for about three years now. I work for a charity called the PDSA. So we provide veterinary treatment to people who are on benefits or means tested for whatever reason. And it means that their pets can be treated for three, for free or for reduced costs. Um, it's a brilliant charity to work for. It's quite intense, um, but very, very rewarding. I got the job, so as I said, three years ago, it was my first job out of vet school. I was part of a graduate program, which was brilliant. Quite often as a vet, when you qualify, you get sort of just thrown out into the world. You're a vet, there's no kind of first level, second level, like you might have in medicine where you're an F1 or F2. So it was great to be part of a really structured program. I had a group of seven other new grads that were in hospitals across the UK similar to me so we could kind of feedback to each other on how we were doing and it was very supported um, my typical day so it's probably easier if i talk about my typical week so as a vet and i'm only a vet of what we call small animals dogs cats small furries rabbits guinea pigs etc obviously there are vets of farm animals and horses but i chose to go down the small animal route for me my week is broken up into doing consultations where i will See an owner, they'll bring their pet to me, present a problem, the animal's not eating or it's limping. I will take a history and then examine the animal and then decide what to do next. Um, the other part of my week is made up of surgery, which is by far my favourite part. Um, really hands on and the surgeries can range from things that we book in deliberately. So animals coming in for neutering, um, things like lump removals etc. I won't go into too many details because I don't know how much people, how squeamish people are. Um, so there's the routine booked in surgeries and then there's surgeries that are emergencies. So this might be animals that are struggling to give birth or probably most interesting are when animals have eaten things that they shouldn't and I have to go in and remove them. This can range from corn on the cobs, um, socks. I found a SIM card from a phone before dummies from um, like the end of a dummy, a whole host of things. So every day is very varied and because I work in a busy hospital, um, it's quite high in intensity um, and things get rushed in all the time. I kind of imagine it's a bit like A&E, but for animals. The most memorable moment, um, as I said, it's probably just the, what we call the foreign body. So an animal's eaten something that's um, it, sh it shouldn't have done and it's a guess of what we're going to find when we go in there. I actually did a surgery on a dog uh, not long ago and um, the paper decided to do a story about me. This was during the beginning of the pandemic where um, obviously veterinary charity or vets all had to sort of change how they were seeing people and because we're a charity and we work purely on donations made by owners and the general public um, we were really struggling to get the funds that we need to keep going. So the team at the PR um, for my company asked if I would send in a story. So we did that one and it got put in the paper, which was nice. So that was definitely um, memorable for me. I um, was planning to run the London Marathon for the PDSA as well. That's obviously been postponed, but that's been uh, lots of fun going out and spreading the good work of, of who, I, um, who I'm a vet for. The worst part of my job so i do obviously have to deal with quite a lot of sadness um it's different in human medicine obviously with humans you do everything you can to make sure that people survive that's quite different with animals obviously there's a question of ethics and welfare and its quality of life and sometimes unfortunately that does mean i have to put animals to sleep now you could think that would be the hardest part in some respect it's a comfort because you can put an animal out of suffering but it's definitely the most challenging bit and it's really hard with the owners. A lot of people think that this job is so I is just to work with pets and animals. It's not the case at all. I'd say even 70% of what I do is actually working with people. So dealing with um, their emotions, they love their pets dearly and they want everything the best for them. Um, just explaining what's going on. So it's communication skills are probably the most important part of what I, of what I do. The best part of my job, uh, the animals. I wouldn't do this job if I wasn't, if I didn't absolutely adore them. I'm regularly at work if I'm finding the day quite hard. Someone will find me probably in the kennels cuddling a kitten or a dog or something just to remind me why I'm doing this because it can be 
quite overwhelming um, and as I said very busy so it's treating the animals and making the owners um, happy the one thing I wanted when I started this job was that someone would come in and say please can I see that vet Jenny um, that's the best feeling in the world that someone seeks you out specifically especially when you're newly qualified and look very young and you're probably 30 years younger than they are and they still trust you to look after their treasured pet. Um, key skills needed for anyone to, wanting to be a vet. So as I said, communication, absolutely first and foremost, you've got to deal with a lot of different people where their emotions are all over the place, including colleagues in big teams. So teamwork is um, always one up there as with any profession. Academically, you do have to um, do sciences at school. When I applied, it was biology and chemistry A-level. Things may have changed um, a little bit, but I imagine that those are still very important. It, that can be daunting and probably the prospect of going to university, which is a five year degree in veterinary is like, oh. but the content of the work, I wouldn't say was more challenging than school, just the volume. So if you're good at managing your time, you got to balance working and having fun then you'll be okay. Um, I also, piece of advice, if you're not sure what you want to do, do not worry. Life is long and we can change our mind 